everyone, my name is Unawikhe Kumalo and I do a lot of videos about personal finance. This ranges from how to buy shares, how to file your tax return, how to make a budget that works for you, um, and literally everything under the sun relating to personal finance. So if this type of content does interest you, I would encourage you to check out my channel after you watch this amazing video, which is all about the questions you guys have relating to easy equities. So if you haven't seen it already, I made a video on the Easy Equities platform, which is basically an app that allows you to buy shares on JSE listed companies or even US companies. Um, so I took you through from the registration process all the way until buying your first share. Um, and then this video is just a follow up to that to answer some of the questions that I have been receiving either in the comments, in my Instagram DMs. Do follow me on Instagram if you don't, at nobuki underscore kumalo, um, as well as in my email inbox. So I hope that this video will help you all, just so I can address everything all at once and you don't have to keep asking me. Alright, cool. Please remember, these videos do not constitute financial advice. Please do seek a financial advisor for information that is personalized to your life. Okay guys, I will be addressing different questions. So if you do want to jump straight to whatever pertains to you, just check out the description box below. There will be timestamps about which question I'm answering where, but I would definitely advise you to watch the whole thing, including the ads, because you don't know what I could be answering as part of another question. All right, cool, let's get into it. What is the smallest amount you can invest? Um, I would say about five rand. This is just because think about you have to actually send this money into your Easy Equities account. So that could have some transactional costs. Then when you actually buy shares, you still have to pay some brokerage costs. It's about like three, five cents. It's not a lot, but it is something. So that when you do invest five rand, you probably have like three and fifty, three and sixty to invest. Um, and I mean, it, it does sound small, but you can still get shares with that amount. So basically the minimum amount I would say you can invest is five rand. Um, but you know, it's, it's really up to you. You can really try push it if you want to deposit three rand, go for it. You want to deposit two rand, go for it. I just don't know how um, feasible it would be in terms of your transaction costs. Second question, do I have to be a South African citizen to register on Easy Equities? The answer is no. So I've got some notes here. So okay, so if you're a South African citizen, but you're living overseas, maybe you're au pairing, teaching abroad, or you're just traveling, you can access Easy Equities. You just need to provide your South African ID as well as three months bank statements of whatever account are a citizen of the common monetary area countries, this is Namibia, Lesotho or Swaziland, you can still register for easy equities and just use it the way that South Africans use it. Or you're not a South African citizen and you're not a citizen of those countries that I mentioned, but you do have a passport, driver's license and all of that and you have a South African bank account. So maybe you're here on a study permit or a work permit or whatever, so you do have a South African bank account, but you have a passport and like a foreign ID, that is still fine. You are still able to use the Easy Equities app. Now, the other side is if you don't have an SA bank account, um, you know, then you still are able to register on Easy Equities, but you only have access to the international market. So you can only buy shares in the United States of America. You do not have ability to buy shares on the JSE listed companies, which are South African companies. Question three, what is FICA and how can I get approved? So FICA is just a way for the South African government to control money movements in the country. It's basically to ensure that there's no money laundering happening and that all investors are identified. So they want to know who has money where. So to get your FICA approval, you need to upload a copy of your ID documents, could be your SA ID document or your passport or whatever it is that you have, as well as proof of residence. So this can be a bank statement, it can be your insurance letter, it can be your lease if you're living in an apartment, it can be anything that shows your name plus where you live. This is just so that they know who is investing and where this person stays just in case something happens. I'm not, I'm not saying anything will happen, but they need to know where everyone stays. Okay, so to upload this, you just go onto the app um, and you know, you just try and find where it says my FICA and you upload the documents there. 
there is a video on easy equities where they do show you how to upload your fika documents so just check the link below um, and you can see that whole video quickly question four what happens if i don't have a tax number so if you don't have a tax number it means you're not a, a tax paying person yet either you're not working or you're not working and earning enough to be paying tax which is fine you can still register for easy equities all you need to do is select the non-taxpayer um, section that just means that you will not have a tax number linked to it and that's fine you can still trade normally um, you know it just means that you will not have any tax effects however if you do have a tax number and you're not sure what it is then please just try and see what it is get it on your bank statement sorry not your bank statement look for it on your sell it on your payslip rather yo my brain is a bit of a mess so it should be on your payslip and if you're not sure just give SARS a call or check on your actual return it should be there you should know this number just keep it safe keep it on your phone keep it in a, in a, in a notebook whatever it is this is like your identity as well it's like your id number just relating to your work um and just put it there guys don't try and evade tax don't try and do funny things where you say you don't pay tax even though you do pay tax if you know you pay tax and you're working and all of that just upload the tax number um yeah it'll just save you a lot you know you don't want to be involved in any scams unaware oh and just one more thing if you do select the non-taxpayer section they might ask you to provide a reason why you are not tax paying so you could say you're a student or you can say that um you know you you're informally employed or you're not working or whatever it is you know whatever the reason is for you not having a tax number um, and if you're not a South African citizen, then just say, not a South African citizen, therefore this does not apply. How long does it take for my money to reflect on my easy equities? So this is in the situation where you've deposited money and you want to know when it will start reflecting on your actual easy equities account. So it depends. There are three ways of paying into your Easy Equities account. The first one is EFT. This is when you go to your bank, your branch, your ATM, or you use your cell phone banking and you actually make a deposit from there. Basically, you are going from your bank to Easy Equities. All right, guys. So this is your Easy Equities app. You go to My Funds, then you deposit. Um, you'll see that I have like 38 cents. Cool. You scroll. As you can see, you have your Easy Equities reference, that red number. That is my one. Do not use it. That is my one. So I've copied it for when I go and make my payment. There's three payment methods. So firstly, we do EFT. You have to select one of your bank accounts that, that you're going to transfer to. So this is the APSA bank. You use these details on your cell phone banking. But like I said, if you use a different bank, try and transfer to the same bank. So Capitec to Capitec, NetBank to NetBank, it just makes it quicker. In this case, it usually takes about two days to reflect, two working days. I know I once deposited, I think it was on a Friday, the amount only reflected on Monday, just because it was a weekend and you know, things are a bit slow on weekends. So it takes about two days, but I mean, if it is a weekend, be a little bit more patient. Um, so this takes a bit longer because the bank actually has to transfer it to Easy Equities bank account. Second method of paying is the credit card option. And this is on the actual Easy Equities app where you go and you invest and you upload your, your, your banking details. You put your card number, that CVV number and everything. This is just basically like when you're ordering Uber Eats on Take A Lot and all that, you're just paying online. This is immediate. The money reflects immediately because you're actually uploading it on the actual portal. Um, I prefer this method because it has less risky, like less riskiness of you sending money to the wrong Easy Equities account. But because it is immediate and because it is convenient, you do pay money for it. So it's about 2.5%. No, 2.3%. Okay, so back on your app, my funds again, and then this time you select the credit card option. So here I want 100 Rand into my Easy Equities account. I want to be able to buy shares with 100 Rand. So I'll put in 100 Rand. But because I told you that there are costs to this, you'll see there's 1 Rand 60 fixed charge, 2 Rand 30 percentage charge. So 103 Rand will leave my bank account. Okay, then you enter your card details um, and then at the bottom, they also tell you about like the, the payment details again. Basically, the higher your amount that you're actually putting into that thing, the more your transaction costs. So if you are planning to like deposit a large sum of amount, like 1,000 Rand, that's a lot, you know, 10,000 Rand, that's a lot. 100,000 Rand, please, I beg you, just go and do it through your bank because there you don't pay any charges. Unlike here when you pay on the actual app, 
they charge you 2.3% on whatever amount. It seems small when you're still investing 10 Rand, it's not really much, it's about 23 cents. But as you go higher and higher, you can see that it becomes a lot more costly. And those are shares that you could have bought. You know, it seems like nothing. Ah, oh, it's only 30 Rand, it's only 23 Rand, it's whatever. Those are three shares that you could have bought. Cool. And then the third way of paying is the SID SID. This is very similar to the credit card because it also reflects immediately um, and there are also some fixed costs here. I think it's about 1.5% and then there's a flat fee of 160. Um, but you actually have to have your SID set up. So this links to your online banking. So do try it out if it is something that interests you. Um, just see which one works for you and you know going forward you can just you know use whatever you prefer. Um, I, I'm not really sure what I prefer. It just depends on my mood. If I want to buy shares now immediately, I do the credit card option. And even though it says credit card, I use my debit card. So you don't have to have a credit card. And I know a lot of us probably don't have credit cards. It's 2021. We don't really have credit cards, but you know, it, it applies for your debit card as well. So just, just use it as long as you can do online purchases and your bank allows you to do it. You can upload using that credit card feature. Cool. But as I was saying, if it, if it is just a random amount of money and I'm in no rush, there's no share I want to buy, there's, there's, no, there's no indicator that I've received, I will do the EFT way and I'll wait two, three days for it. Cool. Next question, where can I find information about companies and their dividend payouts? Okay, so a lot of people want to know like where they can find out information about what companies are doing well, what companies are not doing so well, who pays dividends, who doesn't, and all of that. So I would encourage you to read the news. So News24, Fin24, Bloomberg, um, ENCA, all of those things that talk about news. You know, if you are someone who's interested, do check it out. But like I said in the previous video, I, I'm someone who doesn't really like reading the news. So I get a lot of my stuff off of Twitter. Um, just follow the right people. There's Banker24, there's Koshik, there's, there's a lot of people. You can even follow me because I retweet some of the stuff. Um, and, and basically, I see what's happening with companies. I know sometimes there's like an oil spillage or an oil catastrophe. And we all know that oil, Cecil, oh, great time to buy Cecil type of thing. So you just need to find those indicators. But don't stress. You know, that's if you're someone who's actively trading and you're someone who wants to Buy, buy shares and sell them like in two weeks time that's someone who actually has to read the news all the time but most of us i think we're long-term investors we're people who want to invest for the future if that's the case try and find a company that's stable that can offer you growth but in a stable way so that way your shares will not increase in price that much all right guys so let's go back to basics google we will google which essay companies pay dividends let's not underestimate the power of google you can still get a lot of information from this you just have to sift out the advertisements and other nonsense here you can see full south african dividend stocks list and they show you the dividend and the payout uh, so with dividends just be aware sometimes a company will have quite a high dividend payout but it's not consistent so for example maybe they're going to pay you 70 cents per share um, but then that only happens once every five years versus a company that pays you about 15 cents per share every single year um, so just compare that depending on you know how much you want to receive and also guys the, the the dividends will be quoted in cents it's not a lot of money but if you have a lot of shares then it it does become a lot of money so 15 cents per share is little but if you've got a hundred thousand shares mm, yeah it becomes quite a lot cool um, but i will touch on it in terms of how to make profit because someone did ask me that but basically try and find your information but don't be bogged down we have so much going on we have our jobs we have people have children people have families to look after so you don't have time to be reading the news all the time um, but when you do get a chance, go for it. Another thing that I found really, really helpful recently is that I joined a few Facebook groups of people who have just started investing. So there are like a lot of easy equities, but that aren't easy equity groups. They're just like easy equity investors coming together to discuss what they're buying, what they're planning on buying, what information they have. And I found that that was quite useful because it's 
a lot of people just like you and me who are trying to make money who are trying to buy shares you're not really sure where to get information so people talk people ask hey what do you guys think about xyz is it a good buy or not um hey guys what do you think about crypto people come in with their comments so i think it's really fun to see so many people engaging and trying to help one another because it's not a race it's not like if i share information with you that means my share becomes less expensive um yeah so so it, it, it's a nice community but 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 i did tell you it is normal people like you and me so these are not like professionals and 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 like myself i'm not a i'm not an investing person i can't tell you what to buy and what not to buy so take whatever they say with a pinch of salt you know um go and do your own research go and check the graphs like i showed you see if the graphs are making sense is it a good time to buy or not and I'll tell you, I made a mistake because um, some guy posted a screenshot of shares. I think it was ArcelorMittal or whatever that company is. And he was making a lot of money. He bought them for so low and then they increased in price. And I was like, yep, settled. I am going to buy those shares. But because I bought the shares when they had increased in price, when they were good for him, I made a loss. Like my shares were dropping every single day. I sold them. Okay, so I just want to show you, this was the company ArcelorMittal, and you can see I made a loss of 17%. Cool, so if you look at the graph, this is what had happened around September last year, 2020. The shares were trading at about 39 cents. And then sometime early um, 2021, the shares increased to about 2 rand 70, 2 rand 80. I think they even went up to 3 rand. So this is when that person was making a profit. This is how because they went from 30 cents to about 2 rand 70 so that's about 2 rand 40 profit on every single share so imagine if you put in 500 rand that is quite a lot of money that you've made more than double more than triple more than quadruple anyway so i made a loss but if you look at the long term graph you can see that in 2014 these shares have reached 40 rand 38 rand so there is still hope that maybe these shares will um you know improve over time but yeah i'm i'm still a bit sad about that so i sold them so you know it what works for other people might not work for you but it's fine trial and error that's why you don't go in and put your whole retirement amount in these things you just put money that you don't mind losing because it is investing and there's no guarantee that you will make your money back um you just have to make calculated guesses guesses cool okay so now moving on to the less technical questions question one was can i buy shares as a student yes you definitely can i actually started my journey as a student so you can if you don't have a tax number remember what i said just click the non-tax paying question two how do you actually make profit off of buying shares this is a really, really good question because people always tell you invest, invest, invest. But if you don't really understand how you're making the profit, it seems like you're just pouring your money into the, this thing, these companies, these, this app, whatever it is, and you're not really sure how you actually get your money back. So basically, the way that you make profit is twofold. First of all, is if you are a consistent trader, you're someone who you, you're a trader. That's what I actually called it. You're a trader. A trader is someone who is actively buying and selling shares. So you basically go onto this app once, twice, three times a day just to check how it's performing. Um, just to, if there's any news that you've heard about the industry, maybe let's say look at Sasol again. Like I said, oil spill, um, something, brand crew oil, whatever happened, you know Sasol is going to have a share tank their shares are gonna go down. So if you are someone who is buying and selling just to make a profit, then you know, oh, I need to dispose of these Sasol shares before they go down because I'm going to make a loss. So you can do that. You're always on your toes. You're always reading news. You're always reading newspapers, um, checking out things on, on Instagram, um, not Instagram, on Twitter. Um, think about Elon Musk. Um, Elon Musk has Tesla and Tesla is a United States company. So with Tesla, their share price goes crazy. Every time Elon Musk tweets something, it either goes up or down. So those are very, very fragile. They, they just, they're erratic. You cannot control it because it all depends on which side of the bed Elon wakes up. Quick example, Elon tweeted that the Tesla shares were too high. The stock price was too high. And what happened is that after that, the share price fell because people thought, okay, if the CEO doesn't believe in his company, why should we? It tanked. So if you are an active trader, you are someone who tries to detect or rather predict 
what Elon is going to say today and see if you need to buy more Tesla shares or dispose of them, basically sell them because they are about to become a loss making investment. Cool. This is a lot. This is a lot of work and I personally do not have time to do that. And I know a lot of you do not as well. So how other people make profit is that you buy shares that you know are stable, will continue to be there in the future. This is for companies that you can trust, companies that have been around, or even companies that are new, but you believe, you know what, they, they've struck gold, they can definitely um, keep this company for at least 10 years, 15 years. That is a big thing because, you know, when people open companies, a lot of companies don't make it past the two-year mark. So if you can see a company like a startup has made it to year three, you know what, maybe, they, may, maybe you can trust them, maybe you can buy shares there. Then you have your your golden oldies your companies that are, have been there they've been around for more than 100 years companies like johnson and johnson um cecil i love cecil it's as if i've been sponsored by cecil it's just that cecil is one of those shares that a lot of people talk about because people have seen the growth of shares people have experienced the growth of cecil so you know it's it's an easy one for us to talk about um so with this basically you buy a share today it's 45 rand just an example you buy shares they're 45 rand you buy two so you pay 90 rand for those shares a few years later maybe five years maybe 10 years depending on how long you decide to check those shares have now changed in price they were 45 rand and now they're like 1000 rand so on each share that you had you bought it for 45 rand 10 years later it's worth a thousand rand so you've made how much profit 955 rand on one share but now i told you you have two shares so 955 times two now i'm not going to multiply that but i'm pretty sure i can 955 times two is about uh, you can do the math it's okay um but basically you have made profit in that way this is great if you are someone who is trying to invest for things like buying a house one day, buying a car one day, sending your kid to university one day. It's not something you need today. It's not something you need next year, not in the next two years. It's a long-term investment. You are allowing it to grow. And the way that shares work is that the graph is so erratic. It does this. But over time, it increases. It's still very risky because they keep going up and down. But I started here and I'm ending up here. But it's also jumping up and down. But this is a lot better than jumping up and down here for 10 years. So that's why they say that there is growth in the long term. So exponentially, they do grow. Um, but that's if you keep them there for long. Not if you're someone who's buying and selling all the time. You really have to be someone who's active. Next question, is it possible to make a loss? Yes, it is very, very possible. Nothing is guaranteed. You are investing, you are being hopeful. Um, obviously, I would encourage you to do calculated decisions. So look at the company, look at, at their history, see how they've been performing, see how other investors feel about it, and then buy. Don't just buy something because, oh, they have a nice name, or, oh, I like their logo, or, oh, I heard them talking about it on the radio, so I'm pretty sure something big is about to happen. That's not calculated, and that's very risky, and you may or may not make a loss. So losses are definitely a thing, but it's not it's not like you can go negative You can only lose the amount of money that you've invested So that is why I usually encourage people to diversify Don't put all of your money in a baking company Put some of the money in a coffee company some of the money in a in a, in a vegetable company some in a fruit company just so that when people are over the coffee they can maybe they're moving into a vegan life they want to buy veggies you are still making money because they're transitioning from one of your company to another of your company that's what you call diversifying balancing your risk next question which shares would i recommend that you buy i get this question a lot be it on instagram or in my emails but guys honestly i can't i don't recommend any shares not just because I don't want to share because I know I remember, I remember someone once said, oh my word, why are you being so stingy with information? Just tell us which, which companies to buy from. And I was just like, number one, I don't know. Like I said, no one knows what's going to happen in the future. No one could have predicted Corona. No one can predict, um, a, a, you know, like a, a fall in the market. So I don't know. Number two, if I did know, trust me, I would already have made at least five million and then maybe I'd share. Number three, my role, my job does not allow me to 
encourage people to buy things because I'm an auditor and it looks as if I have inside information, which I do not, trust me. I literally audit private companies, so I am in no way involved with the JSE. I do not know what companies are doing. Um, but because I work for the company I work for, it could look like I have inside information and I'm telling you that, yeah, you should buy she So I can't tell you. And number three, no, I've said number three, number four, guys, we are all trying to make it. We are all trying to find which share is the best. So please do not trust people online. Please do not just take people's word for it. Like, you know, I'm surprised at the number of people that would take my word for it because it means I can open a company, scam all of you, because you think, oh, Miss K knows what she's doing. So please, guys, I'm a good person, so I will not do that, but not everyone is good. And you watch a lot of channels, you watch a lot of people on, on Facebook and on YouTube who want to trade for you, who want to help you out. Please be very skeptical of the help that you accept because you will lose your hard-earned money and it will not be nice. Just do, it the, just do it the traditional way. Find out information for yourself, choose a company for yourself, and let's just see. Trust yourself. You're smarter than you think. So I can't tell you because I don't know. I promise you, I would not stop from helping you. If I knew, I would tell you. Take your money. People will scam you. People are not to be trusted, especially online. And it's a really sad reality because people lose a lot of money. That's why Forex trading has got such a bad name because of all these people who scam people, who say, give me money and I'll go and invest for you. Don't do that. Do it for yourself. Trust yourself. You are smarter than you think. And you, you don't need to have a finance degree to, to buy shares. You don't need to come from a financially wealthy family. You don't need to be making 50,000 a month to buy shares. I told you, five rand is the minimum share. Buy shares in companies you know. Pick and pay, you buy your groceries there. Shop right, you buy your groceries there. Game, you buy your furniture there. Just buy shares in companies that you know and you can trust and you'll be fine. It's not a quick way to make money if that's what you want because you will not make quick money but in the long run you will thank yourself I promise my biggest advice would be for you to investigate and try buy shares in the TFSA account so that's the tax-free savings account the reason I say this is because the name says it it is tax-free so whatever profit you make, like that 955 rand that you make, that usually gets taxed. So you won't get the 955 in total because SARS does their thing. Um, but if, if you bought the shares through your tax-free savings account, you don't pay any tax. It is yours. Any, any dividend you get from it is yours. They don't touch it. They don't tax it because of the tax-free savings account. But there are restrictions to the TFSA account. Um, there's a restriction on the amount of money that you can upload every year. There's a restriction over your lifetime. So just do a lot more research. Um, don't, don't go blow your whole account. Don't go put in a million. I don't even think you can put in a million. But obviously there are restrictions because SARS does want to put their hand on your earnings. Um, but you know, it is definitely something that you should look into because that money comes to you clean, pure. It is yours. And as a follow-up from this, how is your tax affected through profits or dividends that you receive? So because in your FICA status and your, and your actual registration process, you did upload your tax number, relax. SARS already knows how much you're making. SARS knows the dividends you're getting. They literally know everything. It is a good and a bad thing. Um, but all you need to do is that when you are doing your, your tax return at the end of the year, you attach your tax certificate that you get from your Easy Equities um, platform. The statements are on the app. Literally, you just go to tax certificates. Um, and if you're not really sure how to do this, it's fine, it's fine. When it is tax season, you will know what I mean. But if you really want to go find out now, go check out my video that I made on how to file your tax return. There is a section where I discuss um, claiming, I mean, declaring your shares. And I literally go onto the Easy Equities app and I show you where to get your statements, how to upload it and everything. Cool.
All right, guys, I really hope that this video has been useful. It's been a lot of yabba, 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 um, because I'm just answering all of the questions that you guys have. If you do have any more questions that I didn't answer, you can drop them in the comments below and maybe I'll do a part two of this video. Um, otherwise, you can go and check the Easy Equities website or send them a message on Instagram. They're quite responsive um, and just ask them because they are the ones who actually work there. I personally do not work for Easy Equities. I'm not affiliated with them. This video is not sponsored. It, it is just based on my own personal um, experience with easy equities all right thank you so much for watching and please do follow me on my socials just so we can stay connected and you can also see the information that i come across that might help you in your investing journey all right goodbye